When it comes to mermaids, you'd be forgiven to think that a certain Disney creation is the most iconic. But what if I told you that once upon a time there was a mermaid that was even more famous than Ariel? Before we jump into today's episode, if you haven't already, don't forget to smash that subscribe button to be notified every time I upload. In today's episode of Unusual As Usual, we're learning about the Fiji mermaid. The Fiji mermaid was supposedly caught off the coast of the Fiji Islands in the South Pacific. Samuel Barrett Eads, an American sailor, bought the Fiji mermaid off a Japanese man in 1822 for $6,000 using money from his ship's expense account. The Fiji mermaid didn't resemble an animated Disney princess or a certain coffee cup logo though. Instead, the Fiji mermaid was often described as hideous and ugly. It was a stuffed specimen, dried or mummified, its skin was black and semi-translucent. It was around three feet long and was posed in an awkward stance. Its mouth was open its tail turned over and its arms thrown into the air, giving the appearance of having died in great agony. After returning home with his newly acquired oddity, he'd set up a small exhibit in a coffee house, which displayed it inside a thick glass dome under the nickname, the Remarkable Stuffed Mermaid. It was an overnight success, becoming the talk of the town. Every day, hundreds of people would gather and pay the one shilling fee to see the mermaid. Although it caused a lot of talk, eventually attendance for his exhibit began to decline and in January 1823, the coffee house closed for good. The mermaid was packed away in storage and wasn't touched for nearly 20 years until Eads passed away and the mermaid was inherited by his son who promptly sold it to Moses Kimball of the Boston Museum in 1842. Kimball traveled from Boston to New York to show his new purchase to his friend P.T. Barnum, who had recently purchased the museum there. Kimball suggested that they work together on exhibiting the mermaid. Although Barnum wasn't fully convinced of its authenticity, he did believe it could draw the public to his museum and he agreed to lease it off Kimball for $12.50 every week. The Fiji mermaid was instrumental in Barnum's success. Not only was it hugely popular, but it set the foundation for many of his later tactics for generating interest in his curiosities. Barnum concocted quite an elaborate scheme to get people to part with their money. The plan was to generate just a small amount of interest from the press at first. He did this by sending letters to newspapers from various fake people in Alabama and South Carolina, who claimed to have met Dr. Griffin from London and had seen his amazing collection of creatures. The next step of his plan was for the fictional Dr. Griffin to arrive in Philadelphia. Playing the role of Dr. Griffin was Levi Lyman, who was one of Barnum's associates. At the time, new animals from all around the world were still being discovered, such as the duck-billed platypus, which the so-called Dr. Griffin took great delight in showing to the press. Levi Lyman, still in disguise as Dr. Griffin, then traveled to New York and showcased the Fiji mermaid to a small audience. Because the press were under the impression that multiple people had vouched for Dr. Griffin and that they had seen his duck-billed platypus in person already, it never crossed their minds that the Fiji mermaid wouldn't be the real deal. Dr. Griffin arranged a week-long exhibition, which the press and their readers lapped up. After only five days, Barnum conveniently managed to convince Dr. Griffin to bring the Fiji mermaid to his museum and the crowds flocked to see it. Barnum also printed 10,000 pamphlets which depicted beautiful mermaids modeled on voluptuous women completely different than the Fiji mermaid's actual appearance. But given its success, the public didn't seem to mind. In 1859, Barnum took the Fiji mermaid on tour to London, where it again proved a popular attraction. 
When he returned to the United States, the Fiji mermaid took up residence at Kimball's Museum in Boston. And that's its last known location. Not much is heard of the Fiji mermaid up until 1897, and it's assumed it spent a long time stored away in the museum's archives. Two years after Kimball's death, a mermaid exhibition was donated to the Harvard University's Peabody Museum, where it's still on display today. But it's unknown if it's the original Fiji mermaid. The discrepancy starts with its posture. Barnum described it much different in his autobiography, saying that the right hand was against the right cheek and the left tucked under its lower left jaw. Much different from the Fiji mermaid on display today. So what exactly is it? Well, Kimball did exhibit mermaids at multiple times through his career, so it could be that the mermaid was a later creation, which would make sense considering it looks to be in rather good condition, indicating it's not actually the one that went on tour with Barnum. The original Fiji mermaid was likely created in the early 1800s by a Japanese fisherman, as a joke. As the story goes, it was made using the torso and head of a juvenile monkey which was sewn onto the back of a fish, before it was stuffed and dried. It was then likely sold to a Dutch merchant, as the Dutch were the only Westerners allowed to trade with Japan, before falling into the hands of Samuel Eads, who brought it to America. Over the years, countless copies have been made of the Fiji mermaid, fakes of Barnum's fake, if you will, including this one, which is one that I own. I bought it from a French company called All Steamed Up. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description to this store. Like mine, mermaid fakes come in all shapes and sizes, but the general theme stays the same. A half woman, half fish sea siren usually dried or mummified for effect and displayed in a glass case. A CT scan of the mermaid on display at Harvard University's Peabody Museum reveals it is made up of a wire armature, paper mache, bone fragments and fish scales. In popular culture, Fiji mermaids have been referenced in TV shows such as The X-Files in the episode Humbug, Mulder and Scully investigate a series of murders in a community of sideshow performers. Mulder believes that the murderer could be the mysterious Fiji mermaid, which Scully argues is only a hoax. The Fiji mermaid also makes a brief appearance in the very first episode of Gravity Falls as one of the objects on display at the Mystery Shack. And there we have it, the Fiji mermaid, a story of how a fake monster crept its way into some of the most popular museums in the world. Many people hope that mermaids might actually exist in the darkest depths of the sea. However, it's highly unlikely. How about you? Do you think that lurking somewhere out there could be a real life mermaid? Let me know in the comment section below and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all we've got time for today, but I'll see you all next week. And remember, stay unusual as usual. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this one too. If you want to see more abnormal animals, you can check out the full playlist by clicking here. Don't forget to ring that bell to make sure you don't miss out on next week's video. And if you have any ideas on what the next episode should be about, make sure you add it to the comment section below.